Much has been made of the GOP's lackluster performance in Tuesday night's elections around the country, and there's been a lot of analysis about who's at fault for this whole thing. However, I think a lot of the criticism directed at one particular party is misplaced. So hang on, and Dr. Front Porch will give you his autopsy analysis of this otherwise dead political body. My name is Brian Trippett. I am your front porch conservative. Step on up to my electronic front porch and let's talk. Going into Tuesday night's elections uh, around the country, GOP operatives, candidates, and everybody up and down the food chain inside the Republican Party was feeling pretty good about themselves, for the most part. You have your presumptive nominee in Donald Trump, who's riding high in the polls against Joe Biden. You seem to have all the issues on your side. And now you're going into elections in places like Virginia and Kentucky and a few other places around the country. And given how well Trump's performing in the polls against Joe Biden, you would think that the election results would be reflective of what's going on at the presidential level in that particular race. However, the GOP lived up to their reputation. They managed to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory in so many different places around the country. Well, as you might expect, as these things go, the recriminations start, and a lot of it has been directed so far at the former president. Trump is to blame for what happened in Kentucky. Trump is to blame for what happened in Virginia. However, I am not necessarily inclined to agree with that line of analysis, not necessarily because I'm a supporter of Donald Trump's presidential bid, which I am, and I will tell you that up front. I just think that blaming Trump for this doesn't get down to the root of the problem. And for the record, I'm not the only one that feels that way. We're going to start our analysis by listening to some comments by John Solomon of Just the News. He appeared this morning on Steve Bannon's War Room, and he had a very interesting take about what happened Tuesday night. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to listen to this. Well, listen, I, I can only tell you what my reporting tells me, that across the board, the people I've talked to, they said we have a Ron McDaniel problem. They got to do it. How they do it? Really, listen, Donald Trump is, the, uh, without a doubt, the effective leader of the Republican movement, the conservative movement. It's his call. If he told her to step down, she'd step down, right? He's got to make it. He's got to be George Steinbrenner at this moment in history. He got behind Ron McDaniel when there was an upstart challenge from someone uh, a few months ago uh, uh, with... with um, the great lawyer from uh, San Francisco, and they didn't. It didn't happen, right? He got behind Rana. Now they lost another election. It's, it's Trump's call. He's the, uh, clearly the head uh, of the party right now with his polling data. If he wants a change, he makes a change. He has to be George Steinbrenner. Okay, we're going to stop it right there. Now I know a lot of you out there are probably listening to this and wondering to yourself, well, why is Rana McDaniel getting the blame for this one as opposed to Trump? Well, let's stop and think about this for a second. If this were a presidential year, then I might understand the argument that says you could probably blame Trump for it. However, this is an off-year election, which means your presidential nominee or the incumbent president, if it happens to be that your guy's in the Oval Office, isn't really all that responsible for cranking up the get-out-the-vote effort. That is solely the function of the National Party. And in this case, in places like Virginia, and particularly in the Commonwealth of Kentucky in the governor's race against Democrat incumbent Andy Bashir, Ronna McDaniel and the RNC failed spectacularly to the point that people are now calling for her resignation. John Solomon's hearing it from a lot of different people. After what happened Tuesday night, people are starting to clamor for a change. Now, People are saying, well, it's Trump's fault that they lost. Okay, for you out there who are blaming Trump, I have some questions. What exactly was it that you thought Trump should have been doing that he wasn't otherwise doing at the moment? Let's take Kentucky, for example. He endorsed Daniel Cameron, the Republican nominee for governor. He did a tele-rally the weekend before uh, 
the voting took place. Trump did everything he could to help the guy. And yet Daniel Cameron could only get within five points of Andy Bashir in the final tally. Plus, you also have to keep something in mind about the Commonwealth of Kentucky. In the past 50 years, they've only had two Republican governors, as was pointed out by Rich Barris this morning on his live stream. Those two Republican governors were Ernie Fletcher and Matt Bevan, and that's only been in the past 20 years. So Kentucky doesn't exactly have a reputation for electing Republicans to the governor's mansion. So given the popularity of Bashir inside the Commonwealth, Daniel Cameron was facing an uphill fight from the start. The fact that he even got within five points of Bashir is pretty good, all things considered. But with a better turn-out-the-vote effort, maybe he gets over the top. And that rests solely on McDaniel. But John Solomon is not the only person who's hearing that Ronna McDaniel's got to go. I want to play you a clip from D.C. Drano, interviewed also on Steve Bannon's show, but later in the day, Folks, I want you to take a listen to what he has to say, because this is pretty prescient. Take a listen to this. ...to hide, and last night was atrocious. You know, I see some never-Trumpers trying to blame Trump. That guy's dealing with four indictments in, in courtrooms and, you know, doing rallies and, and up in his polls by 40, 50 percent. The woman supposed to be running this RNC is Ronna Romney McDaniel, and, and she's doing a terrible job, you know. It's akin to having a, a closer that comes in every ninth inning, loads the bases and lets them hit a grand slam and then and then gets a pay increase. I mean, how many times are we going to lose with her in these off year elections without Trump on the ballot? It's not. OK, Rogan is asking a very honest question, and it's something that Republicans need to start thinking about, not just now, but also in the future. Part of the problem that the. Republicans have nationally is if Trump's not on the ballot, they can't turn out voters. And it's not just an issue of mechanics. It also has to do with an issue of trust. Now, one of the other things that was said about last night's election was that Republicans mishandled abortion and it cost them in various places around the country, particularly state of Ohio, where there was a ballot initiative on to enshrine the right to abortion in the language of the Ohio Constitution. Well, I don't think personally that it was the issue of abortion that's getting Republicans in trouble. It's how they handle it post-Dobbs and how they message what they're trying to do. I want to show you a tweet from U.S. Senator J.D. Vance, one of the senators from the state of Ohio. I won't read all of it, but I will read part of it because I think this is pretty prescient. J.D. Vance says the following. For pro-lifers, last night was a gut punch. There's no sugarcoating it. Giving up on the unborn is not an option. It's politically dumb and morally repugnant. Instead, we need to understand why we lost this battle so we can win the war. I was very involved in the no campaign for issue one, so let me share a few insights. First, we got creamed among voters who disliked both issue one, but also Ohio's current law, the heartbeat bill. We saw this consistently in polling and in conversations. Quote, I don't like issue one, but I'd rather have that extreme than the other extreme, end of quote. This is a political fact and not my opinion. Second, we have to recognize how much voters mistrust us, meaning elected Republicans on this issue. Well, I would argue it's not just the issue of abortion, it's any number of different issues. Having an unplanned pregnancy is scary. Best case, you're looking at social scorn and thousands of dollars of unexpected medical bills. We need people to see us as the pro-life party, not just the anti-abortion party. That's a great point. Now, Vance is about to point out something as it relates to Trump and the abortion issue. And this is really important, especially for all those people out there blaming Donald Trump for what happened last night. I want to read this next paragraph, and I want everybody to pay attention to what's about to be said. J.D. Vance writes in his tweet, third, as Donald Trump has said, quote, you've got to have the exceptions, end of quote. I'm as pro-life as anyone, this is J.D. Vance speaking, and I want to save as many babies as possible. This is not about moral legitimacy, but political reality. I've seen dozens of good polls on the abortion question in the last few months, many of them done in Ohio. 
give people a choice between abortion restrictions very early in pregnancy with exceptions or the pro-choice position and the pro-life view has a fighting chance. Give people a heartbeat bill with no exceptions and it loses 65-35. The reason we didn't lose 65-35 last night is that some people who hate no exception restrictions will still refuse to vote for things like issue one. And that is an absolutely great point. I'm a lot like J.D. Vance in this regard. I'm as pro-life as they come. But there also reaches a point where people need to understand something. You can only go as far politically as the realities on the ground will allow you. For 50 years, pro-lifers fought long and hard to get abortion overturned in this country by the reversal of Roe. It finally happened with the Dobbs decision, but the pro-lifers never planned ahead. It's kind of like that great line from the movie The Candidate, when Robert Redford, who's playing a a Senate candidate out in California, wins in an upset, he looks at his campaign manager, Peter Boyle, and says, what's next? The pro-life movement never thought beyond the reversal of Roe. They have not planned how to win this. They're trying to go immediately for no abortion anywhere in the country under no exceptions. You're not going to get there. And Trump was trying to tell everybody, hey, look, you've got to have some exceptions built into this thing. And he's also out there saying Republicans don't know how to message on this issue. Well, turns out Trump was right. Now, you can get mad at him for saying it, but that's the reality of the situation. It wasn't abortion and it wasn't Donald Trump that did the Republicans in last night. What did them in was their inability to message the issue of abortion correctly and their inability to turn out voters because, as J.D. Vance alludes to, voters don't trust the Republican Party right now. It's not just the issue of abortion. It's a number of different things. And it's gotten so bad, in fact the recriminations about what happened last night, that during tonight's presidential debate in Miami, Vivek Ramaswamy lit the whole place up. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to play this for you, and you're going to get a kick out this, I think. Give me one second to pull this up. He absolutely called out Ronna McDaniel. Folks, take a listen to this. Make your case. Why would you, uh, why should you be the nominee and not the former president? I think there's something deeper going on in the Republican Party here, and I am upset about what happened last night. We've become a party of losers at the end of the day. We're a cancer to the Republican establishment. Let's speak the truth. I mean, since Ronna McDaniel took over as chairwoman of the RNC in 2017, we have lost 2018, 2020, 2022, no red wave that never came. We got trounced last night in 2023. And I think that we have to have accountability in our party. For that matter, Ron, if you want to come on stage tonight, you want to look the GOP voters in the eye and tell them you resign, I will turn over my, yield my time to you. And frankly, look, the people there are cheering for losing in the Republican Party. Think about who's... That has got to be one of the gutsiest things I think I've ever seen done. Keep in mind, Ron McDaniel was in Miami, Florida tonight to watch this debate. He just basically looked her in the eye and said, come up here and resign. That's pretty ballsy. So, where does this leave it? I'm going to say something that's probably going to get me in trouble with my conservative brethren, but it honestly needs to be said. Donald Trump is polling very well right now against Joe Biden. doesn't matter if it's in a head-to-head matchup or with other people in the race. But after last night's performance by the RNC in terms of getting out the vote, I am convinced of this. It doesn't matter how well... Donald Trump is polling against Joe Biden. If he cannot get out the vote or doesn't get assistance in getting out the vote from the RNC with a very effective ground game, then he's going to lose to Joe Biden at a time when he ought to be headed for a landslide victory. All the issues favor Trump. The dynamics of the race favor Trump. Everything is there. The elements are setting up that if everything executes correctly, Donald Trump wins in a landslide. But if the piss-poor performance of the RNC in their get-out-the-vote effort is repeated in November 2024 as it was on November 7, 2023, Donald Trump will lose 
The country will get four more years of Joe Biden. And if you think things are bad now, they will get even worse. So the Republican Party has a choice. You either stay with Ronna McDaniel, let her destroy your fundraising ability, let her keep activists at bay, not engage on the issues that she should, or you can get rid of her and clean house up and down throughout the RNC. Robert Barnes made a fabulous point this evening on his uh, live stream, and that is Ronna McDaniels is the symptom to the is the symptom. She's not the disease. If you're going to remove her as the chairwoman of the national RNC, you may as well go ahead and clean house as far as the staff because you've got that old Bush, McCain, Romney wing of the party dominating the internal politics of the national organization. So, if Donald Trump wants to win in November of next year, he would improve his chances by moving Ronna McDaniel out. But that's what I think about it. What do you think? As we start to wrap up this video, please do me some favors as always. Number one, if you're not a subscriber to my channel, please do so. Number two, please hit the bell for notifications. I want to make sure you're always aware when new material is coming out, be it a video or a live stream. Number three, leave a comment below. Number four, share the video around. And finally, give me a thumbs up. My name is Brian Trippett. I am your front porch conservative, and I will see you next time.